All right, everyone, welcome back to the Schlein Show. My name is Seth Schlein. I'm very pleased to be joined today by Ryan Lavarmay, who is a catcher and um, pro baseball player who has played for numerous teams across the minor league and major league levels and has played for Team Israel in the 2017 World Baseball Classic and for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics team. And I'm also starting this column with the Sports Rabbi, where I will be interviewing um, different pro Jewish athletes to understand their background into Judaism and to really dive deeper into the world of Jews and sports. So without further ado, Ryan, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So my first question for you is growing up in California, what was that baseball experience like? Uh, that was the only thing I knew, I guess. I didn't have something to compare it to as far as moving from another state and, and seeing the, the competition level. But looking back, we had a, a core group of players that I came up with from the time I was eight years old that almost everyone ended up playing division one baseball or going pro. So being in the warm weather state, we we'd go to, to tournaments all over the country and beat up on the teams from the other States. <laughs> and we'd end up in the championship game against another team from right down the road in California. So great yeah. baseball there and uh, a good core group that I got to grow up with. Um, so you said there's a really great core group. Were you mostly, you know, opponents with them against in the high school or really, you know, and then friends off the field or had that really um, correlate to, you know, growing up? There was maybe six to eight of us that started on an eight-year-old all-star team together and played all-stars every year together. You know, it was the, we played in the local rec league, so it wasn't a club team every mm -hmm. year, but it was the same core group of us that, that lived in the neighborhood and played at the rec league and played all-stars together. And we all ended up going to high school together. And so when was it in high school that you realized that this could be, you know, the next thing for me? It, I like never realized it in high school, actually. Um, I didn't make the varsity team until my junior year. And even half of, half of my junior year, I was benched because I wasn't playing very well. So really, I only played one full year on the varsity team. And even then, I had a, I had a great season looking back. I hit like 482 with eight homers. But I wasn't the best player on the team. The scouts that came to the games were there to look at Eric Pettis or to look at Chad Boyd or to look at, you know, Gabe Cohen, a lot of these other players that were pro prospects. And I, I guess I kind of came out of nowhere because I was going to college and I, I had signed to go to Yale before my senior year. And I think there might have been one team that was interested in drafting me in the low round out of high school, but they didn't even talk to me because my coach basically said he's going to Yale, leave him alone. And then it was my sophomore year of college where I led the nation in batting average and slugging percentage and made the all American team that I was like, okay, right. This is something that I can do professionally. All right. So what was your Jewish upbringing like growing up? Not strong. My mom is Jewish, um, but she loves Christmas. And my dad is Catholic, but has been totally disenchanted by the Catholic religion. So Religion and spirituality was not an important part of our household. We celebrated Christmas, we celebrated Hanukkah, we celebrated Passover, we celebrated Easter, but none of them for religious significant reasons. There was no the birth of Jesus, there was no the Maccabees, there was no the um, miracle of the oil lasting eight days. Mm -hmm. It was, we celebrated for the Easter Bunny and for Santa Claus and for the candles and it just, it was just kind of to have something to celebrate because right. everybody, everybody likes to have something to celebrate. Right. It was, it wasn't until high school that I really started to search out my own Judaism. And I started to go to temple for the first time, but my family wasn't going. So I ended up in high school driving one of my high school teammates, moms to temple because she had MS and couldn't drive and I needed someone to go with. So we went together and in my mom's minivan that I got my driver's license. Um, 
So you said before that you were already signed to go to Yale before your senior year. How in that, how and why did that, um, you know, come to be? How and why did what come to be? Going to Yale. I, again, I wasn't a big prospect. I wasn't the best player on my high school team. After my junior year, that's when you, you start going to showcases. You, you go put yourself in front of college scouts, put yourself in front of pro scouts, and hopefully they see something they like and, and give you an invite. So after my junior year of high school, I went to the Stanford camp where you stay on campus for a week. It was amazing. I hadn't ever even visited a college campus before. Mm-hmm. So it was like this totally eye-opening experience for me. Stanford is unbelievably beautiful huge campus the baseball field is amazing the baseball program is amazing and i just went through the week um stanford was not interested i was like i'd love to go here they're like not no thank you um but after after the camp we got in the minivan we drove back down to southern california it's maybe four or five hour drive and by the time i got home the you know this was i don't know if i even had a cell phone yet we got we got home there was the landline there was a voicemail on the on the house phone that was from the coach at Yale saying hey I'd love to invite you for an official visit and I think I got so excited I literally jumped in the air and like hit my head on the door frame um, right because it was just an unbelievable and exciting moment and out of that Stanford camp I actually got recruited to UC Davis Yale Harvard Cornell and Dartmouth wow. and that was kind of the extent of who recruited me out of high school mm-hmm. Um, so my next question, does, when you were, um, in college, having, you know, kind of, you know, we start, we rekindled this Jewish experience in high school. Did that stay with you when you went to college? Um, honestly, it hadn't really become a part, a part of my core being and who I identified with at that point, uh, in college. I, I meditated a little bit. I, I did some, a lot of sports psychology thought. Um, there wasn't much spirituality in my life. That really came later for me as a part of playing for Team Israel. Um, growing up, again, it wasn't important. It wasn't a part of my core being. And I just, I didn't really value it because I didn't know what I was missing. So if, if we want to talk about my relationship with Judaism, first of all, my meeting my wife, she's Jewish. She was bought misbud. She, she's a part of the Jewish community here in Denver, where I live now. And it was always important to her. So starting a relationship with her, being Jewish, the fact that I was Jewish meant, you know, it was important to her. But seeing how she had a relationship with the religion and with the Jewish community kind of opened my eyes to what it could be and how meaningful it could be in my life. And then through playing for team Israel and really stepping into my own Judaism publicly and with both feet for the same, for, for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was embraced by the Jewish community and I, and I was representing Israel, this country that I hadn't thought a lot about growing up. Right. And it just, it just started crawling into my heart and into a place where it's never going to leave now. All right. So it kind of leads me to my next question was, what led you to play for Team Israel in the first place? Peter Kurz reached out to me in the, for the 2012 qualifier and asked if I would be willing to play. And I said, of course, if I'm available. And I happened to be in the big leagues that September when the qualifier happened and the team just missed qualifying. And then in 2016, he asked me again. He said, hey, if you're not in the big leagues for the qualifier, would you like to play? I said, of course. And 2016, it's almost like, it was destined to happen because that was 2016 was the only year out of the last 11 that I didn't get a major league call up. So it was the first time I was available for the qualifier. And I went to me, it felt like an amazing baseball opportunity. Like I had never played international baseball before Mm -hmm. something that, you know, this, it was the, the biggest international tournament in the world for baseball. So it was just an amazing opportunity baseball wise. All right. But it's still, it still wasn't meaning that much to me religiously yet until I met the team, until I got involved and, and started talking to the guys. And it really grew on me how much more this was. It was not just a baseball opportunity. 
this was an opportunity to, to represent something so much bigger than myself. Were you always confident in yourself? You know, no, like I can get, I know I can get a call up. Like right? there's years where like, oh, there's no way you down yourself. Were you ever really overconfident and like got yourself? I think I, I, think I understand your question. Um, was I, did I always know I was going to get another yeah. call up? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, That's a question. Early in my career, I was really, I was young. I was headstrong. I knew I deserved a call up and I knew I was going to earn it no matter what happened. But after getting sent down and getting called back up and getting sent down and year after year, having to earn it all over again, it's very humbling. And baseball is a, is a humbling game. And the professional game of baseball is very humbling. It's, it's a business at the end of the day. And there's only so many jobs. There's 750 jobs in the world. And for catchers, there's 60 jobs. So you need to be one of the best 60 in the world at all times, or else you'll be replaced immediately because there's a long line of people right behind you that would love to take your spot. So I would be lying if I said there wasn't times where I thought I'd never play in the big leagues again. And I'd be lying if I always knew I'd get back, especially after those first couple of times when I got sent down, especially once I left the Red Sox and I wasn't on the 40 man roster anymore. Every time I get sent down, I know it might be the last time, but I've been you know, lucky enough and I've had it shown enough grit and, and enough perseverance to overcome each send down. And I think I've been sent down, traded, released 23 times at this point mm -hmm. and 23 times I found my way back up. And I, every time I get knocked down, I keep getting back up and hopefully I can find number 24. Right. All right. So really pulling for you for this upcoming season after the whole lockout, whatever it ends. Um, did you feel, you know, particularly connected or, or a part of the Jewish community and then any of the cities that you played in throughout your career? Um, I don't know that I've, you know, really embedded myself in the local Jewish community in different cities that I've been to outside of Colorado, where I call home. I don't think I could give you a, a better answer than that. All right. Huh. Do you have, speaking of, do you have a favorite city or a team that you've played for that you really, really loved everyone? Really I mean, Boston was amazing, definitely. Um, we loved Portland, Maine. We also loved, uh, you know, I've, li I've lived in 15 states over the last 11 years and mm -hmm. multiple cities in a lot of those states. Other favorite cities have been Nashville, um, Indianapolis. We really enjoyed Columbus this past year. We really loved it there. So being in Columbus and then being in Cleveland this past year and then just like that going to Tokyo, how can, can you describe what that was like this past season? You mean like being on one team and then being on another team and being yeah. back on another? Yeah, it's it's been a wild ride, and that's something I've definitely needed to get used to. And I think my experience has helped a lot because when I meet a new pitching staff, I need to earn their trust immediately, right? I'm I'm there to help the pitcher be his best at all times, and if I haven't earned his trust, then then it's going to be that much harder to work together. So I think my experience gives me a certain, a certain baseline where they know like, okay, this guy's been there before this guy, you know, he, he, he knows what he's talking about. But on top of that, I've met so many different personalities and I've gotten to work with so many different pitchers with different repertoires that I've seen a lot of similarities in different guys as, as I have gotten older. Whereas, you know, this guy likes to pitch hard in and, and or he's, he's working from the outside in or he's working from the inside out. Um, you know, this guy really trusts this curveball. This guy really is a, just a change of guy. Since I've, I've seen similar guys in the past, I have a, a base of knowledge to work from and that I can relate to them. Like, hey, I've worked with someone that has a similar pitch repertoire to, as you before. This is how he worked. What do you think about that? And instead of being a complete stranger, now they can see, oh, this guy might know me better than, than I thought. Right, right. And to top it all off this past season, you also were able to play in the 
Alan Pitts, correct? Yes. So going from playing, you know, with the with, with Cleveland and with the Clippers to going to Tokyo, how did how did it all come about? You know, I obviously know you were playing with the qualifiers and with Team Israel, but how did the like, transition happen this past season? So anytime anybody that's on the major league roster is not eligible to go to the Olympics. So before the Olympics happened, I ended up getting called up for a week. Austin Hedges had a concussion. He went on the seven day concussion injured list. And that was three weeks before the Olympics. When I got called up, a lot of my Olympic teammates t- were texting me. Oh man, like congratulations, but that's a bummer. You won't be able to come with us anymore. Right. Whereas everyone else in my life was like, Oh, you got called up. That's amazing. Congrats. So there was kind of this juxtaposition of a lot of people in my life were happy for me. A lot of people were disappointed. I wasn't going to get to go to the Olympics. Right. But then I got sent down in time to go. And that was always my plan was if I was not in the major leagues, I was going to go to the Olympics. So it worked out. Right. And for the majority of everyone who's watched those games, the first time I was seeing baseball and seen Israel become, you know, that larger delegation. Um, how much of a significance did you feel when you, when you walked onto the, onto the field, you know, wearing Team Israel across your chest? It was definitely meaningful to wear Israel in an international competition because there have been so many people in the past and even now that like to diminish what Israel means in the world and maybe delegitimize the country as a whole or the Jewish people. And when we play on an international tournament like that, on an even playing field that we earned our way there, no one can say that we don't belong. And it's, it's really humanizing. And that's one of the things I love about sports is that it's unifying. Everyone does it. Everyone plays sports around the world. It's something that everyone understands. And if we can play sports together, then maybe we can you know, cross the bridge and find more common ground as, as people. Right. Um, so my next question for you, do you have a favorite piece of advice that you've received over your, your time, you know, whether in little league or, you know, just even as recent as this past season? Yeah. As far as advice I've received or advice that I like to give, it's, enjoy what you're doing and enjoy who you're doing it with because you never know when it's going to be over. You never know when it's going to be the last time. So when I'm, when I'm playing baseball, I try to remember to enjoy it because it's a game and it's supposed to be fun and as humbling and as frustrating as it can be. If you keep it fun and you enjoy it and and you enjoy your teammates and who you're doing it with, then that's what leads to a happy life. Right. How, you know, a couple more final questions for you. Um, how has your Jewish identity shaped who you are to this point as a professional athlete? My Jewish identity has definitely become a, a much more important part of my life since t- 2017 when I participated in the World Baseball Classic. Um, it, it shapes who I am, how I present myself in the community on a daily basis. Um, it's important in, in our life. It's, it's, it's really just a part of who I am. One final question for you um, before we conclude this episode of the Schlein Show. Um, what would you say to yourself if you saw yourself you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, looking back on your, your experience? 10 years ago, that's a great question. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I was just making my major league debut with the Red Sox. And I remember really wanting to exemplify who I observed Jason Veritek to be as a leader. I mean, he's, this guy is a legend. He was known as, as a leader and and the go-to guy, but I am not the same person as him. So I was, I was trying to, I was trying to be, who I saw him as from the outside, whereas that wasn't true to who I am. So I don't think that I would 
10 years ago, I would have listened to me now because I was very headstrong and very young and immature. Um, but if I could get through my, my thick skull, I would have just told myself to, to be the best version of myself and not try to be anyone else. That's great. So as we wrap it up here on the Schlein show, thank Ryan very, very much for taking this time. It was Sunday morning to join me today and, you know, looking forward to, you know, publishing the episode and to be able to speak with more and more athletes in the, in the Jewish sphere and to look, um, look towards the column that will be published soon and towards the future episodes of this podcast. Thank you very much.